What's going on everyone? Welcome to today's vlog. We are down in Galway. So first of all, we're staying at this amazing hotel. It's called the G. I'll give you a room tour in a minute. Second of all, I'm doing a little kind of seminar event meetup in Galway City Gym. That was on Saturday. Linda also got her teeth done yesterday in an amazing place called Ordent. I'm going there today, get these pearly whites sorted out. My web developer and SEO guy is also based down here, so I'm gonna have a meeting with him about my new website. Again, I gotta revamp it all, my app landing page, everything for January 1st, because that is a big time of the year for fitness people. And we're also down here, just have a little fun, meet some friends, and yeah, have some good times. The Christmas lights are also turning on this evening as well, so I wanna get in the Christmas mood as well and go to them. But let me give you a quick little look at the room. So this is like the kind of office section, a little bit of a mess right now, so let's, let's keep it over here. Huge bed, we had uh, Netflix and chill last night, we watched a nice movie. <laughs> and then here is the bathroom, and again, double sink, double shower, that's, that's crucial for me really. Huge bathtub as well. And then this is probably my favorite part whole, the whole room, look at the size of it, it's like bigger than my apartment. We got another bathroom in here, and then, this is my favorite part though. <laughs> right? We got this huge living room in here. Like, you can have someone like sleeping here, you can have someone like you know, sleeping here. <laughs> like you can fit, like it says like two, two people staying here, you can fit at least 10. So now we're gonna go down to breakfast. First time having breakfast in the G Hotel, so I'm very excited. You know I like food. Food's a big thing in this channel. So let's go get some breakfast. All right, so. Starters, we are having a little bit of bread. I'm gonna try to go easy on that. Then we're having a big bowl of fruit, some coffee, and then our mains are gonna come out. All right, so here is our egg white omelets, and they were generous on the servings. So we also got red onion, ham, and some spinach in that. And then I'm gonna go up, probably put like some pork sausages, uh, some bacon in with that, and yeah, it's gonna be a great breakfast. We're gonna crack on with the day. Usually, I inter intermittent fast, but yeah, this is too good. Go on. Go on. <laughs> <laughs> Ordent in Galway in the shopping centre. They're unbelievable. Her teeth turned out so well, so I'm getting mine done today. I'm getting them clean, getting some gaps filled in, and just kind of some general maintenance. So can't wait to see. And here's before, can't wait to see after. So yeah, it should be interesting. In the next few clips, you're gonna see myself and Dr. Mamoon go through what I'm getting done. Like I said, I didn't need much done to my teeth, but I was really happy with the changes he did make. I think it's important to look after yourself in all aspects, be it your body, your mind, your skin, in this case, your teeth. So I think it's safe to say we can all do it smiling a little bit more, and I'm someone who smiles a lot, or at least I try to, so for me, it's important to have a good smile. They also looked after Linda, and she was delighted with the results too. This is the result of my teeth. I'm absolutely delighted with them. And again, I'll link all of Ordelt's. <laughs> Ordelt, of course I, I would call them Ordelt. Ordelt's details down in the description box. Again, huge appreciation for what they do. And they're all so professional and so kind of like nice and bubbly in there as well. But yeah, I'm absolutely delighted with the results. And now the plan for today is we're gonna go hit the gym and then we're gonna kind of discuss details for the event, the seminar that I'm putting on in said gym tomorrow. Saturday at 1 p.m. in Galway. Um, so yeah, gonna get ready for that and then kinda enjoy the day because it's still a beautiful day. Look at that. So yeah, fun day ahead. Oh, 
So we just stopped for a coffee there. We're going for a little walk around town. Look at these Christmassy vibes out there. Amazing. And now we're just at a place called Coffee Work. And then the lights are getting turned on at about six or seven. So we're gonna go check that out as well. I cannot wait. Really nice kind of Christmassy vlog for you guys. And yeah, I'm in a great mood. And yeah, like I said, living our pets go away live. So cheers to that. Amazing spread. This is Tribaton or Tribaton, not sure how to pronounce it. It's in Galway, just off Air Square. So we're just sticking on the waters, the Diet Coast tonight. We got veggies, we got normal potato fries, potatoes, steak, dips, everything. So we're gonna finish things off here, get an early night, gym first thing in the morning, and then smash the seminar. So see you guys then. Okay, so we just woke up there, and now the plan for today is we obviously gotta hit the gym at some stage do the seminar at 1 p.m. but we're gonna start our day with a flotation tank device okay what's the actual name of them again sensory deprivation true, tank. true true that's it okay so uh, joe rogan always talks about these you've heard about them a lot you're just in this tank you no know, sound darkness nothing for an hour okay hopefully i don't go insane with my own thoughts but either way this is my first time ever doing one we're doing it at a place called apollo galway they also sell like supplements cancer 3d protein bars probably pick up a few of them for the ride home yeah it's gonna be my first time doing it and i think i need it i think i could really do it so we're about to pack up out of here and go deprive ourselves of our sensories <laughs> the g hotel galway absolutely amazing especially living room all right, so we just pulled up outside of Apollo Galway. I can't wait for this. It's kind of like, it'll probably get me in the zone before my talk, so. All right, let's check it out. Hey, bud, what's cracking? Good morning, good to see you. Check this, people. We got the Nutri Quick. We got the 3D. What a spot, unbelievable. So uh, how, do I, how do I get into this? It even looks relaxing, so. All right, people, I'm gonna see you in an hour, and I'll report back when I'm feeling, so yeah, see you then. Wow, that was like nothing I've ever done before. First thoughts are like, you ask yourself a lot of questions in there, like you're completely alone, uh, no phone, no distraction, no smell, sight, sound, anything, and geez, I actually really needed that, to be honest, like seriously, talk about blocking out the noise. Yeah, so definitely recommend you guys try that out, like, wow, I'm gonna try do that more regularly. It's probably the closest I've got to meditation, very bad at meditating, um, never mind doing it for a whole hour, so wow, highly recommend that. But I'm a bit zonked afterwards, a bit sleepy, so I'm going to have a can of 3D and go hit a gym session in Goy City Gym, um, which is also where my seminar is on. And like, I'll probably grab a quick shower afterwards, but like, I don't have to prepare anything. There's no mics or anything. It's just like a little, little meetup uh, Q&A seminar. So yeah, really looking forward to that. So yeah, let's get this gym sesh. <laughs> Dropping out, and I was like, 
what the hell do I do in my life now? I was so lost, you know, I really was directionless, I didn't know what I want to do, and I stripped it all back, and I know it sounds cliche, but I said, what do you love doing? You know, what do you really want to do in life? And the only thing at that stage consistent in my life was going to the gym. And the social media was really kind of blown up at this stage. Blogging was just starting to get popular. Casey Neistat, did you guys watch him? Yeah. He was doing his daily at the time. I got hooked on that. And then I started also watching like American vloggers, like the Hodge twins, Christian Guzman. He was getting into it. He was one of my best friends now. And I was like, okay, right, let's just be super simple here. You're useless in school. You can't pass first year college. Okay, time to double down on your strengths and stop trying to work on your weaknesses. So I took a personal training course, passed out with flying colors, because again, I, I, did, I didn't even need to study because I love fitness and training and nutrition so much. I literally flicked through the book and half the stuff I'd learned about in my spare time anyways. Passed that and then started making content online, fitness content, and going from there. And when people ask me, like, do I have any regrets? It would actually just be not following my passion sooner. You know, like I'd probably be two or three years ahead of where I am now if I just didn't try to do what society told me to do and you know, have, thought I have to go to college. And then so I did that um, and then I remember I had a Facebook page where I would, uh, does, anyone, does anyone follow the Facebook page? Just out of interest? Probably, it's so funny, it was 2014. Probably wouldn't have even seen me there. And I'd write articles it's like I couldn't go on camera, I was like I just wasn't there yet. Because so I'm so frightened to make a Facebook page. And I write informative articles that I learned in my personal training course and cover like mates and topics. And then people started tagging their friends and that, people started to speak about it, people be like, oh he's calling out, you know, the general like things that were led to be like you have to have breakfast, you have to eat every two hours to stoke the metabolic <laughs> furnace. Right, you have to have a post-workout shape or your biceps fall off and then fly off into the atmosphere, okay? Like all that BS. And so I was kind of ahead of the time there. I educated myself properly. And so that gained traction. And then in September, 4, September 1st, 2014, I put my first YouTube video live. And that was so scary for me to do. I was like, you see this confident guy here that can just, you know, put a story and just sit here and have a chat with you guys. Not the case at, at all. I remember I recorded myself, the first video still there, every second word was uh, boom, there was long awkward pauses where I'm like, what the hell do I say next? <laughs> and my editing skills weren't even good enough to edit them out, so I just stare off in his face and be like, anyways, next meal. So, I, like, everyone starts, you know, from not being used to the on camera, yeah? What were you thinking when you wrote the video, were you like, why would anyone listen to me? It, exactly, right, so I, this is... One of the best ways to start, okay, you probably heard Tony Robbins say this, burn the boats. I had failed college, I had no job, I was sitting at home all day, I had nothing to lose. I was literally just like, fuck it, if people are like, this guy's a complete loser, who does he think he is uploading a video of himself doing bicep curls in the gym? I was like, I've got nothing to lose. I was like, maybe no one will even watch it. Yeah, and who knows? So that was how I got over that. I literally had nothing to lose and had a burn the boats mentality. Uh, where the, the phrase burn the boats comes from is that something, some old, like things like a Roman army, doesn't really matter. They were storming a certain island or a certain other army, and the captain was like, burn the boats. And they were like, why? I was like, because there's no going back then. And they obviously went and kicked some serious ass. That was probably the, the, the worst history lesson you guys have ever heard in your life. <laughs> Okay, that is, yeah, yeah, that is the moral of the story. They burned the boats and they couldn't go back. There was no other options and, and that was me. I'd been fired from any part-time job I was doing, so I had no job. My parents or family or friends didn't have a, you know, they, you know, you can go work with my uncle, you know, they didn't have that. I had no connections for a job. I had no college degree. Um, I had, yeah, nothing. I was literally like, I just had my passion. And funny enough, that gets you far enough. You know, so I picked up the camera, I said, we're living in this crazy day and age where we can now, you know, record a camera, you, you don't even need a videographer, you stick it up on a bloody stationary bike, okay, <laughs> and, and, and you can, millions of people will hear your message, like this video could go viral. I remember like, I typed, I titled a video, my advice for a career in, in fitness, that's on like on, over 100,000 views now, you know, and it was just me sitting down, the camera was still for the whole thing, and people still really benefited. So we're living in this crazy age where smartphones are 10 years old. Let that sink in, okay? But we're living in this crazy age where your voice can be heard, your message can be heard, 
and so, so that was it. You know, it was just nothing to lose. And again, I started putting out informative content. I covered all the basics first. Uh, all my videos are still there. And then I started involving my personal life a little bit more. You know, vlogging and kind of telling people a little bit more about myself. And people built a kind of connection with you. And you know, I did that for five years. It's my fifth year on YouTube. Nothing happens overnight. And anyone will tell you that. If you want a little exercise to do, go back to the YouTubers you follow, okay? Click videos. And in, most of the time, we just click videos. There's a little tab in the corner, and it'll say most popular, and it'll show you the most popular videos, okay? Click oldest, <laughs> right? Okay, there's, there's three options. You go most popular, list videos most popular, list videos newest, list videos oldest. Look at where they began. Go on to Joe Rogan's page, okay? Dip Dobrik, so this first one looks terrible. Terrible, okay? And not even that. It says, it's like, when was this video uploaded? 10 years ago. <laughs> It was a decade ago. Did they give up? No. Are they still doing it? Yes. Has it taken off? Like, finally. What you got to do is you got to do it because you love doing it. I loved making fitness videos. I loved talking about it. So I'm like, I don't care if no one watches. I put up this story 24 hours ago when I went to Galway. I was like, if two people come to the event, I'm going to speak like there's 200 in the room because I love it. Like, I really love it. You know, and that's what you gotta do. And then once you do that, you start putting out content online about what you love. It's just effortless. Multiply that over five years, things started building. Uh, I kept putting, yeah, get close, get my roll pals here, man. And so things started building, uh, more informative content. And then on about like year three, I started to monetize it a little bit. And um, so, you know, sponsors started coming in, and you know, I started selling books, um, an app, training guide, we'll go into all that. Um, you know, as the talk goes on. So let me know if you guys have any questions and we can like uh, delve into things. So the first way I ever made money online was through ebooks and online coaching. So when I had this Facebook page, I was working like full time alongside that. Another little thing before we go into it is I don't tell people to like quit your job, pursue your dreams, drop out of college. I'm like, be smart about it, motherfuckers. Like seriously, or I'm getting the blame. There's gonna be some angry parents ringing me up. <laughs> Okay, so alongside me working nine to five, I was you know putting out online content. I was coaching people, my friends online for free. Okay, I was doing talks for free. Still doing talks for free. <laughs> I was doing talks for free. I was doing everything for free and building up the clientele. And then so I give these online plans to my friends and or even like you know acquaintances, people I kind of know, and they come back to me six weeks later with killer results. And I was like, okay, boom, there, light bulb. If you want to come up with a business, you come up with a solution to a problem. People want to get in shape, but they don't want to go to a personal trainer every day and pay, you know, a hundred quid per hour. They want to be told what to do, they want to follow it on their phone, online, and go get the results themselves. So that was the first thing I did. When people started getting results, I was like, I was okay, so I'm start charging for this. And again, I started off really cheap. I was like, I'll, you know, email you and message you and tell you exactly what to do and what to eat for six weeks for, I think it was like, 120 euro, it, not even. So that's like, you know, 20 bucks a week. My maths is right, <laughs> it could be wrong. And so, and then over time, the more clients you have and the more demand, supply and demand, you can increase your prices. Or again, you can scale it, which is what I've done with my app, which we'll go into in a minute as well. Uh, so the first way I ever made money online, and it was a crazy day when I was like, oh my God, money from the internet has gone into my account. I'm free! You know, it was, was online coaching. And then, so to talk about scaling it, was I made these little 9.99 eBooks. So it was like a three day split, a four day split, a five day split, and a legs push pull split, which I'm actually redoing at the moment, adding a load more info into them and releasing them in January. January, if your personal trainer is like, it's like you earn the year in January. <laughs> yeah. You're like, you're done. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm taking 11 months off. But so I'm redoing them. But they were like the first thing I did, and um, they were 9.99 and not personalized. I didn't know, I, I, they were just a PDF. And I went to, like, I, I put up a story or I put up a post, and I was like, any graphic designer able to put like this word doc and make it look good? Some dude in Brazil was like, I'll do it for 50 bucks, and I was like, sold. <laughs> so again, you know, invest 50 bucks, you sell five guides, and then your money back, you know? So like, it's, it's really easy to put in, just make it yourself, and do, do it up a little bit, and then you can sell it, you know, at scale. 
And so that was the first thing where I ever made money online was selling training guides. And then over time, that's evolved to obviously sponsorship deals. They're huge on YouTube and your own products, like you have the creator agency events, doing business partnerships. I'm a business partner with Raw Gym. I'm a director of NutriQuick, which is a meal prep company. Again, I'm signed with Alphalete, Boohoo, and Ghost Supplements. So, uh, you know, there's like seven streams of income that have came from over time. They just come into play. The beginning, it was training guides in my app. Next to the app, was training guides on my coaching. And then over time, other things just come in. The more value you put in, the more opportunity that's going to come your way. Do you think you need like YouTube? Or do you think that definitely like helped a lot? Definitely, okay. So here's my, here's my take on it. Um, so the question is, do you need YouTube to you know, grow on social media? And in my opinion, okay, I know first of all, Alphalete, a requirement to be a sponsored athlete, but Alphalete has got to do YouTube. It's just because Christian is so um, YouTube heavy, he loves YouTube. Second of all, why I think it's so important is nowadays anyone can post a picture and it doesn't tell you what anyone is like. You know, imagine I never posted a YouTube video. You, you wouldn't even like, why would you bark come here? Like, just for a fucking app self, you like, yeah, fuck this guy. You know, you need to provide value. Like, I've made 500 videos. Some of them are like 45 minutes long. You know, it's like a Netflix series. Like, it's, it's taken me years. You know, so it's like people get to know you and you build a relationship with them. And something that I've been actually going off on recently is something that I've noticed. I'm like, every top CEO in the world is a YouTuber. Okay, Elon Musk, you go in, he's putting up 40 minute videos on Tesla. Okay, Apple, every time they launch a product, you see some dude in a black turtleneck on YouTube giving a talk on the screen. Everyone's a YouTuber when you break it down. Type in Warren Buffett, you get 40 minute interviews. Bill Gates, Mark Zuckerberg. Everyone's a YouTuber. Everyone's putting out video content online to build that relationship. And like, we know the CEOs of all these companies because it's like, they, they need to put a face to the brand to build trust. Imagine just putting your credit card details into a website and hoping you receive a training plan. That's kind of scary, okay? But imagine it's like, oh, I watch this guy, you know, and loads on YouTube, I meet him in person. You know, yeah, he's, he's going to the place I go to. It builds up a trust, and, it, and it's a lot easier to, to make sales and build clientele. But in my opinion, everyone can benefit from doing video. Everyone. Even if that's just doing, like, talking to your story, you need to build a, a relationship. It's just getting into it. It's just that part. Exactly. It's, like, it's getting into it. It is our part. So my question is, you indeed, like, your social media stuff. So Instagram has recently taken off, like, something. So how do you think it would impact the social media Great question. So, it, first, I was indifferent to it. I was like, nah, whatever, you know, like, I don't think we should be get, getting caught up in likes as is. So, I was like, indifferent to it. And now I'm like, you know what, it's a good thing. Because it's going to force people to be more creative and also care a little bit less. And I know, like, even with me, like, I, I was like, this, I sometimes I like my outfit and I want to post it. And I'm like, you know what, if my abs aren't in this, it may not get as much likes. But I like my outfit. You know, and so it's going to make people to be less fake, which social media can be, of course, yeah. and post a lot more of what they like, and again, be more creative, and be more true to themselves, and be more real. And so I think it's a good thing. As someone who owns an agency, if we want to get the analytics, so for example, I did a brand trip, I organized a brand trip for Ocean Beach in June to Ibiza. So I worked with Wayne Lineker, to, and I brought the Harrison Twins and Mike Thurston, uh, to Ibiza to, you know, um, promote Ocean Beach and um, make a YouTube video again. So I organized that with my agency. And it was as simple as I was just like, I, we couldn't see lights. And I was like, hey lads, could you just send me your impressions and engagement? So it's not going to affect influencer marketing. If an agency or a brand or a sponsorship still wants to work with you, they'll just be like, hey, send us your insights. And then it will also encourage people to be more creative, work with their content, and post not just based on likes. So at first I was indifferent to it, and now I actually think it's a good thing. Because one, it won't change influencer marketing, and two, it's going to encourage people to be more creative and stop comparing themselves so much. And I think it actually could even go the same way on other platforms. I know, we were talking, people don't start on YouTube because they're like, oh, I'm going to get no views. And I'm like, yo, when people are making home movies in the 80s, they didn't care about views. You had a VHS tape that you shove into the cassette player. 
You know, so it's like people were making videos because they wanted to make videos. And I think it would be amazing if we went back to that. So, you know, I, I, I'm for it. At first I was like, nah, I don't know. Now I actually think it's cool and it's going to encourage more people to start making content. And I think other platforms are going to take, take that by example as well. So yeah, you know, like how much you guys would start, and maybe you are starting YouTube, but like how much you would start YouTube if like views weren't a thing? And you could just make like a, yeah, there you go, yeah, and you, you could just make sick videos. <laughs> yeah, everyone really. You know, it's so much fun. Like, it's so much fun. Like, you know, imagine you would go on holiday, you'd have your GoPro or your little vlogging camera or like a big massive contraption like that, whatever you want, and you'd record it for the fun of it, and you could always look back on that, and you'd have no problem posting it, like, you know, if you didn't care so much about views and stuff. And so, again, I think it's a good thing. Um, it, it, it is good to be competitive, like in a sense that you know it always pushes you for more if you do a good video and it gets a lot of views. That's good, but overall, I think it's good to to make us more creative and care less. I'm just looking at some of your videos. We want to collaborate a lot with like Matt Fitness, and, yeah. and he's one I'm actually really loving. Yeah, for it. Um, do you find that helps you with your YouTube journey to collaborate with these other people? Yeah, it, it's essential. Yeah, it, it's it's honestly just a, a necessary. I don't know anyone who's grown a massive Instagram or a massive YouTube channel uh, without collaborating. And it doesn't have to be, and that, now you say, oh, hey, who do I collaborate with when I'm just starting out and I've got 500 followers that are my friends and family and cousins, right? Someone else in the same place, okay? And then it gets, it snowballs over time. So let's say you got 1,000 followers, collab, do a workout video on Instagram or YouTube with someone else with 1,000, and no, you got 2,000. So then maybe you collab with someone 3,000, oh you get more, and you keep going and going. And you keep networking, again that's like what I was saying, network with people in this room, and you keep going until you're, you know, got a big audience and you're collabing with people who are huge, you're collabing with companies and people in the millions. But so to go back to your question, are collaborations important? They're not just important, they're essential. You literally have to do them, or else how else will people really hear about you? And I know sometimes when I'm like, oh, you know, my, my views are, are, are dipping a little bit or like my engagement or something, I'm like, oh, I haven't done a collab in ages. So you've got to get out there. And that's also the thing with YouTube. It's like, you can't, you got to put effort into it. You got to go out into the world. You got to meet people. And that's what like every successful business owner will tell you as well, how important networking and collaborations are. And have you seen like clothing companies like, for, like Supreme, will like collab with like someone, Boohoo will collab with Migos, right, I just saw that. So it's not just like YouTube and Instagrammers, it's like actual companies are doing it. You know, Beats by Dre collab with like um, everyone, LeBron James, Conor McGregor, he did a viral video with them. Like so companies are collabing with celebrities, not just sponsoring them, they're actually making products together. So collaborations are just essential on a, on a whole level. And they're fun! You know, so it's like that, that's the main thing as well, to get out there, you know, make connections and yeah, it's, it's essential. So yeah, you know, you've got uh, what did your parents think of you, like, going into YouTube to try and make a living and stuff? Like, oh. It's kind of the old, old. oh my god, this, this, this is a big one, okay, and, and even like Linus and my girlfriend back there, she's different. I would give her an awkward wave, I'm like, thanks for being late. <laughs> but uh, so that is a tough one, right, and we're like, these, our parents and our peers, they're from a different generation. So you can't really get mad at them for not understanding. When I told my parents that I was going to train people online, they're like, are you going to do jumping jacks through a fucking laptop? They're like, are you going to put on the little, the little camera on top and be like, all right, come on guys, let's go, we have first train time. No, okay, they didn't get it. Because like, if you said that, I was going to say, if you said that 50 years ago, if you said that 20 years ago, I'm going to online coach people. They'd be like, what? They'd be like, what are you talking about? If you said the concept that we're going to charge up our phones and, and then talk to people all around the world, we're going to FaceTime people in second to second HD basis. If you said that 30 years ago, people would honestly put you in an insane asylum. It sounds so mad, okay? You know, so they're not going to understand, okay? And they're not, and you're going to face a little bit of adversity. And you need to just put your head down, put the blinkers on, and do your thing. Mom was like, oh, you know, you sh should have stayed in your job, you should have done this. And, and it's almost impossible to convince them otherwise. So it, you're better off just showing them instead of trying to convince them. My parents really didn't believe I was doing anything until I moved out and bought a car. And I was like, yeah, what you saying now, you know? 
So, so you really just have to show them. Yeah. And I also remember I showed my family my bank account. And I'm like, I'm earning more doing my online coaching business on the side than I am working 9 to 5 in an office. I was working in a startup in an office at the time. As soon as I made more in a month, I was like, I can quit my job and you can't say shit. And they were, I just had to show them and they were like, fair enough. You know, so my advice on what to do if you're getting a bit of stick from your parents or your peers, just show them. You know, and maybe keep them happy. Be like, yeah, 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 okay. Just, like, just, just, just watch, you know, and go and put the head down and do the work. And you're always going to face adversity, and, and that's going to make you a stronger person. It's going to make you thick skinned, and it's going to make you work harder. You got a little bit of chip on your shoulder. You got a point to prove. So yeah. That's it. Sushi, we're going shopping. This place looks amazing. Alright, so talk went really well, and we literally have moved all day. I'm fasting, it's about like 3 4 pm. I'm about to die. So, first things first, we went and got some sushi. It's like surf and turf, so it's like prawn and steak, which looks absolutely amazing. We're gonna finish up the vlog here. Super successful weekend down Galway. Love it here, and yeah, I'll see you guys in the next one. Keep it real. Hope you enjoyed the vlog. Peace.